It is Gambit on the blue side of your screen against Fnatic on the right side, the red side. This was the 2013 LCS Spring Split Final, but two very different teams and two very different situations. Top and bottom of the table is you've already alluded to, Krepa. Yeah, immediate Huni ban. Familiar sight, we've seen this before. Rumble goes out, Hecarim goes out on the Huni. Target ban from Fnatic on Edwards or Ghost of Peppers about his trash. Quite normal. Lucian taken out, I like it because it seems to be the, the one staple pick that Forgiven performs well on. A gap closer AD carry that is still in the meta game right now. Sounds like a Sivir uh, that Forgiven has yeah, said that he doesn't like playing all too much. Well, we did see very similar bans yesterday from Rocket. It was Rek'Sai, if memory serves, was the final ban against Fnatic. And that meant Huni got his hands on Rise. Let's see if that's going to change today. One more ban. Gambit is going to be Callista towards Reckless. So AD carry pools being hit a little more this game. Yeah, Forgiven also not that notorious for his Callista. I've never seen him play it actually. So forced to ban him because she is a very strong pick right now, especially in organized teams that work well, especially with a, a hard engaging support like Yellowstar that likes roaming early, can get an XP deficit because Fate Calls can always pull him back in these early fights and uh, let him re-engage afterwards. Final ban from Fnatic coming out will be Victor. Hasn't seen that much play. We've always been talking about LeBlanc, Azir, Cassiopeia. But Betsy did play a, a decent amount of Victor back in the day. He did indeed. And Frog in 0 and 2 on Victor thus far. Lost to Power of Evil's Cog. Lost yesterday to Pepe Nero's Diana. But w with all the picks available, how on earth do you only take one? Yeah, you'll. You have to. <laughs> <laughs> how on earth do you not take one? No, no, I, possible Rek'Sai pickup early for. Uh, Gamut, I could see. Betsy did well on Azir as well. I liked his Azir more than I did his Fizz, for sure. And it's gonna be oh, we forgot about Rise. So this is the thing, we talked all We had an entire Telestrator segment. Well, Rise was available, uh, Maokai was available, a large number. Krepa, make some sense of this. Rise very quickly locked in at the end, Azir and Rek'Sai to follow. So we know Diamond Prox doesn't like playing Gragas. We know that, according to popular opinion, Tier 1 jungles right now are Gragas and Rek'Sai. Therefore, you take Rek'Sai if you're a over. He's incredibly good on Rek'Sai. What I, well, the first time I played against him in Soul Queue when he was playing Rek'Sai, I noticed that he's very good at keeping up the tempo of the game. He's always doing something, always has something in mind, and that means he never falls behind in experience. He's ganking, he's here, he's there, he's everywhere. He uses ultimate, and it's so hard to keep track of him. And then stealing the Azir that was kind of hovered kind of given away by Gambit. Not sure if it was a mind game. Feven, obviously, a good Azir player as well. And Huni doesn't have to take his pick on this rotation. He can just hide it, wait until the next draft. Yeah, and talking about that Azir, it was actually banned out against Febovin at MSI. And we'd not seen him playing it at that point, but we obviously knew that came from scrim results or practice games leading up to the event. So Gambit have run the entire 60 seconds down. They have taken that Alistair, which I'm sure you're excited to see. They've locked in Gragas as well. I'd like to hope it's for Diamond. But Gambit ran the top yesterday. Yeah, memory serves correct. Uh, Edward or oh, Ghost of Pepper, I keep forgetting that. For me, he'll be he'll always be Edward in my heart. He went for the for the Thresh over the Alistar yesterday, so maybe Fnatic did him a favor by banning Thresh and giving him Alistar. I think it's a super strong pick. You have to take it away from uh, from Yellow Star as well, because he's proven that he could definitely play that champion. Reckless has played a lot of Ash. I'm not sure if he's going to pick at this rotation because Forgiven's Ash wasn't all that impressive either. Well, let's step back and ask, what do Fnatic do against Ryze? They left the champion open, they opted to ban Victor. So let's assume they've discussed a possibility, knowing that they'll get more priority picks. What do they run into Ryze as we've seen him pick up two very convincing victories yesterday? So if you're playing into a Ryze, there are two options. Either you pick a strong top lane or jungler combination that Huni and Rainover can use their synergy to shut that Ryze down or at least attempt to, like we saw done against Huni where he went 0-2 early, or you try to lane swap away from the Ryze, starve his farm, and don't let a rocket scenario happen where teleport goes up to the top lane and you start snowballing on that champion. This one you want to avoid. Ezreal locked in here, removing one more gap closer uh, AD carry of the champion pool. Reckless able to hold his own. Uh, might be indicating that um, Ezreal always indicates a passive lane. Might be saying, hey, rain over. Yes, you can spend time in the middle lane. Yes, you can spend time in the top lane because Reckless on Ezreal will always be able to farm. Wow, forgiven locking in the Sivir. Definitely a stylistic change for him. 
everything about this team comp is run at you. Go, go, go. Gragas has got some disengage, but even Betsy on Ari is going to be able to dodge around. And that's a very, what I feel, team fight oriented composition here from Gambit. I think once they group up, they'll do very well. Yeah, definitely so. I'm not the biggest fan of Ari. We'll have to see how it plays into the Azir. There are uh, other picks available. At least she has some mobility. Add the Sivir to her. She can take care of her own. And I've liked, I've always liked Sivir with Rise because he's a little bit immobile, but he dishes out so much damage as we see right now. And he can keep targets locked down. A little bit mobility from on the hunt. And I like Alistar to, to bring it all together as a secondary tank force with that Unbreakable Will. If you pop it in time, you're indestructible almost in the mid-game fights, later in the game as well. Incredibly hard to take down an Alistar in his ultimate duration. So good draft from Gamut. Vast improvement over yesterday. Cannot stress that enough. Well, I'm very happy about that. The question still stands. What do Fnatic run into Rise? We assume that it's going to be Rek'Sai Choga oh, wow. the champion. Now that both Huni and Febivan have run in the spring split. But I expect this to be most likely for Huni top. I imagine. I don't see the value in putting the Azir top. Uh, then again, I am not Huni. And he may well pull a little bit of a trap card here, but imagine, or assuming rather, that Shogaf is top lane, the way you want to shut down that rise is have rain over tunnel and do the flash knockup, followed by the, the knockup from Shogaf itself. Silence, so rise can't keep chaining these spells, can't keep resetting the, those cooldowns like uh, Stress pointed out on the Telestrator earlier. Might be uh, the way to shut him down, because you tried ganking him, doesn't work. You tried diving him, doesn't work. So how do you stop rise from killing you? Well, you'll silence him. Well, we'll have to see whether or not Huni's Cho'Gath is going to work out. It left a lot to be desired when Fnatic ran it in the spring split. We're going to see Febivin on this Azir, which I'm excited about. And I just have to go back to Forgiven on Siva. In the spring split, when everybody was playing Siva towards the end, he didn't pick it up, he didn't play it. And now this is the very first time all year long he's on this wave clearing. No gap closing AD carry, which is something you were talking about in the pregame. Yeah, but at least he adds some mobility once he pops his ultimate. And a very stylistic mismatch between these two compositions. The one side, you have a very poke-heavy, kite-heavy uh, fanatic that's really good at walking back. Think of Ezreal's Mystic Shots. Think of Morgana's Dark Bindings. Think of Cho'Gath's kite potential if he lands those ruptures. At the same time, Gambit, they want to go in. They want to go hard. They want to pop on the hunt and dive in. And we'll see whether or not they can find those fights, Crepo. We're loading up onto the Rift for the first game of the day as Gambit at 0-3, banners lit next to Fnatic, 3-0, looking to secure their first victory of the summer split. They've got Rise. So, um, Trevor. Currently 2-0 on patch 510, and also just take note of the coin there from Yellowstar. It's going to be hashtag GMB win, or hashtag FNC win. Thanks for that, Crepo. What is it going to be? I have no idea. Nor do I. I'm going to let the game tell us the answer to that question. Gambo initially doing a heavy sack. Gambo's a little bit late to this party. All right. But Gambit seem quite committed to this invade. With the change to Torment of Soil, it is now more uh, valuable for Morgana to start buying level one. Back in the day, Torment of Soil was incredibly good for clearing camps a little quicker. And you, you would basically doubting, do I start Q, do I start W on Morg? And you felt that you wasted a little bit of potential if you had to stop an invade with Q. No longer the case. Uh, Q's Roughly the same damage as Torment that's all on camps right now. So while we did see Gambit pushing very aggressively into Fnatic's jungle, Huni replied in kind. He's got a ward, so very similar warding strategies for both respective teams. And we'll see whether or not any lane swap yeah, shenanigans come into play or whether or not Huni's Cho'Gath with the knockups and the silences will be comfortable enough. Now watch the top right of your screen and see if Gambit pings this out because Yellowstar is about to show an award because he wants to get in time for that camp. So Gambit should be aware of where Yellowstar are in because that ward seems to be placed far enough. So no ping on Yellowstar himself, but we did get pings in the bottom. Ah, he, they saw the it. Middle lane, they saw it, yeah. and I think if they didn't see it then, they will see it now, Trevor, because he's spot on award. They saw Huni as well. So complete information from Gambit. Um, good preparation, good coaching from Sean's there. Um, or good shot calling, but information is there for Gambit. Let's see how they use this information. It's the crux, isn't it? Having all the data in the world doesn't mean anything if you can't implement the correct decisions immediately after. So we saw Gosu Pepper and Forgiven getting both of the respective Krugs. It looks like Gosu 50% of the way to level 2. Reckless and Yellow start did drop. Now, without Tormented Soil, you might lose the push advantage. Usually, when we see an Alistair lane, they tend up getting pushed in here. 
Pepper going aggressive, using a stack on a range creep, not the biggest fan of that. I uh, prefer using it on melees to validate the push, but they're already level 2, so it really doesn't matter in the end. Saber pushing in, this is the, the Forgiven style, this is what he likes doing. If you're not familiar with Forgiven for whatever reason, he will push you in the tower, keep poking you over and over and over again until you either cry or base, or both. That's what he's looking to do. We'll see whether or not Forgiven Siva can help pick up the additional weight that needs to be carried here from Gambit. And we heard from Reckless saying that he felt mechanically Forgiven was fantastic, but it was champion pool and rotational play where maybe Forgiven was lacking. And <laughs> Siva is the god of both of those. <laughs> we'll see whether or not he can make it work. Diamond Prox finds Rain over. Diamond Prox is a little healthier on his first clear. And yeah, going going back to that matchup, very interesting matchup, Reckless against Forgiven. He even said in his AMA that he did not rate Forgiven in the top four European AD carries. Who's catching who? We're about to find out. Level 3 against level 3. Diamond is picking the fight. Look he at throws that damage. the barrel down. Rainova is in trouble. It's going to have the support of Febovin. And now Diamond Prox is on the wrong side of the jungle. Let's see. Can Huni find him out? Diamond may need to sacrifice himself. And he's got himself a little bit of quiet to start recalling. Oh, he has to run. If he gets tagged right there, he can't suicide anymore. Well, no tag from Prey Seeker. Oh, he could base right there, actually. He's going to force to either recall or just get dropped by the Nexus turret. So, Diamond technically wins the trade with Rain Ever, but has to give up his life for staying too deep. Now, well, let's take it back to what actually happened. Yes, Diamond Brock wins that extended engage, but as we saw earlier, Febivan chunked out Betsy in the mid lane. Betsy had to use his potion very early. Wasn't sustainable enough. His lane was pushing back as well. He couldn't join that fight first, so it doesn't matter because when both junglers are fighting each other, the first mid laner to help generally snowballs that fight, forced Diamond Fox out, didn't drop uh, a kill, didn't drop first spot, but lost a lot of tempo. We'll see whether or not that comes back to hurt Diamond Fox. Marginally behind Rain Over, both of them going for the Skirmisher Sabres. As we've seen, even CS in the AD carry slot, Febivan with a small advantage middle. And this is the lane that I'm most interested in, Cabo Shard against Huni, Rise and Choke. Well, Rise is what they call a ticking time bomb, so it's fine for him to be even on CS. You can see from his little daughter. In the pip cam. But on the bot lane, 36 CS, even, square. That's impressive, because if you get pushed into the tower repetitively, um, then you're, you're expected to drop a lot of CS. Pepper right goes in, shift from Reckless with respect. Buff donated to Febivin as well, so we will keep our eyes on that ticking time bump. It has the potential to explode once Cabochard gets a few more items. And we saw the tier into Rod of Ages being the sort of de facto yesterday. We'll see if they continue to play the same. Both teams, or neither team, is actually pressured by time all too much. We can wait for the on the hunt power spike when they start grouping. Rise is still the late game carry. At the same time, Fnatic, Azir, we've seen him before, can carry these late game um, team fights with Emperor's Divide. Favon got his blue buff, whereas uh, Diamond Fox took it for himself. So Betsy, we've said this before, he gets less resources from his team in terms of CS share post 15 minutes, in, ter in terms of jungle attention. He's quite starved usually. Still even right now, even though the discrepancy in blue buffs. Rainover finds that pink ward. Round number two between Diamond and Rainover. Rainover's going to tunnel himself out. Because Betsy is here first. Yeah. Got the support from the mid lane. And so a slightly different fight, but we could see some engages happen. Febivin knocks Betsy into the river. Betsy does not have access to a spirit rush yet. Orbit Deception goes up. Betsy still not level six. Rainover's got the support of Huni. Has another flash from Diamond Prox. Keeps him alive. And Fnatic invested a lot. They don't get the kills. But they're clearly in control of the pressure. This is the first time I've seen Emperor's Divide somebody push somebody over that wall, setting up almost a double knockup combo. Rainover eventually flashed over, and Huni, he followed up. So that play was called in advance. Huni didn't magically arrive there. He walked down from the top lane. So Fnatic, they were planning something, and this is why they're lauded as one of the best teams in the European League, because they play with all their resources in sync. Yes, there's a fight in the mid lane. Huni, can you walk down? Yes, all right, come then. For some flashes. We've got both of them. So Diamond and Betsy without summoners. Huni teleport his way back to the top lane and Cabo's running. So TP advantage 
to Cabochard's Rise and Gambit. This is the cost for that play. If you move away from your lane, your lane will be pushed in. It will bounce back. This gives you the enemy top laner time to base and then catch that wave that just bounced back all the way instead of using his teleport. So while that seemed good for Fnatic at first, as you said, teleport advantage for Gambit in a composition with Sivir could be crucial. We'll have to keep an eye on that Sivir Alistair lane. Forgiven has been shoving it relatively aggressively. However, not chunked too much hit points off that bottom lane tower. So we'll keep a close eye on how the towers play. But Kripa, we're eight minutes in. And both teams fairly content to play the farming game. Also, I want to note, Diamond's actually invading on the Gragas. Something we didn't see him do on the Evelyn last week. And definitely Diamond Puck's putting a lot more pressure. I like it. Going back to the bot lane, Forgiven just based for a BF Sword, Long Sword, and a couple of potions in response to the Sheen from Reckless. If it's an extended trade, Forgiven will definitely get the better of that. If it's short poke trades, uh, Ezreal can shift out Boomerang Blade, land a couple of Mystic Shots in succession, proccing that Sheen on every trade. But level 6, you might see some action from this Gambit bot lane. Good Black Shield will be required. So, Ghost of Pepper and Yellow Star, very, very close to level 6. We'll see whether or not those fights take place. Well, look at the rain over. He's trying to get behind Cabochard in the top lane. Well, I think he's got the tools to do so. No flash, but he's just going to tunnel over. Huni has actually got poked backwards. That's the flash from Cabochard. He still gets knocked up anyway. And rain over alone chunks a large amount of Cabochard out. But the moment rain over showed top, Gambit started dragging. But look, rain over uses ulti. He's still on full resources. I don't think Gambit added this into the equation. We'll find out. There's no soul shackles here for Yellow Star. Two members of Gambit inside. Pulverize was used. Trying to find an engage. Double flash. Respect. Because Cabochard joined the party. If we go back a couple of minutes, that teleport advantage comes in. Aggressive Gambit. Aggressive Diamond Pox. And the first dragon goes out for Gambit. Very well played from Gambit. Team at the bottom of the standings. Showing up in the early game against Fnatic. Got the first dragon. And they're dealing with the pressure appropriately. Also on par with their average first dragon times as well. And delaying Fnatic's first dragon, which is very important. So let's take stock. With the dragon and the teleport now down for Cabochard, Fnatic will be timing that. Huni's getting closer to his. He's going to steal away this blue buff. Let's feast if he needs to. That's a resource denial at the very least, but it meant Gambit got dragon. Yeah, trading in, in minor objectives uh, on Fnatic side. They take a blue buff, take a couple of ways of extra CS. A little bit of turret pressure on the top lane. Huni staying in that lane. We'll see if Huni can capitalize on his teleport advantage. We saw Gambit do it first. Can Huni repeat it? Well, Fnatic have shown that they can play from behind. Two games out of the three that they've won, they sort of fell behind a few thousand gold, needed to play with a little bit of defensive stats. This time around, at 10 minutes, they've actually got a 1,000 gold lead. So that little bit of extra farming time from the previous Dragon seems to have benefited Fnatic, and it's mostly concentrated in Huni with that 20 CS advantage. For all you uh, economists out there, hang on, Pebbin takes a little bit of a charm. In terms of support gold, we don't get much, so we have to uh, get the coin upgrade here on Yellowstar. He's already 100 gold ahead, goes to Pepper. Keeping track of that, Sorry. writing it down. Relic Shield versus the Nomad to Daniel, the ancient was buffed. coin. Was buffed in 510. One additional gold from the base, and also at rank 2, additional mana and HP as well. And the best kind of gold. Gold that you don't have to end anything. Just watch those minions die. Especially because you can do it from further away. Yeah. One of the other buffs on 510. Have been pressured in. Betsy doing well in this matchup. All of that from the charm earlier. Febivan was pre pressuring Betsy in the early game. And if we go back to that gank where Huni walked down, a good charm from Betsy there again, getting uh, some tower shots on uh, Febifan. So definitely even matchup here. Uh, counter pick working out so far, only seven CS differential, but there's pressure. And I want I want to see Gambit use this pressure. We said it before, they had the triple push against Elements, but Diamond Prox wasn't invading. He wants revenge right now. Something else that we also have to touch on, the fact that Diamond is working his way towards that Cinder Hulk. Gonna come up against the Warrior Enchant Rainover. So. The tankiness that Alistair, Gragas are going to start developing as this game continues to play out will definitely work in Gambit's favor with the Sivir, with the Rise, who won extended fights. Yeah, Rek'Sai pretty squishy early on. If she goes for uh, the Warrior enchantment, especially if you look at Fnatic's entire lineup, spells out more Kite, more walking backwards, throwing out skill shots repetitively, Dark Bindings, Mystic Shots, Azir poking, 
Staying under safety of your tower. The tower's down, resurrect a new one. Zero's passive. So might want to see Raynor actually get a little more tanky. Soak up the damage to facilitate the kite. Or Fnatic might just turn it all around and just go all in. Which is something they've done multiple times. Zero hesitation. You see Febivin in this middle lane. Dodges the Charm. Charm is down! He gets Betsy under the tower! If that wasn't a Shurima shuffle, I don't know what is, but Betsy decides he wants a piece of more. Goes in with Spirit Rush. Doesn't connect Orbit Deception. Flash is available for right over, and he doesn't manage to pick it up this time around. I feel he could have maybe gone for that if they timed the knockup from Rain over into the follow up from Huni, into Silence, into Feast. Kavishar did not have Flash. Maybe Ka maybe Fnatic didn't time it properly because Kavishar's Flash is almost on. Not, not this time around. Conquering Sands goes out there from Febivin. Doesn't connect on Tremor Sands is spotting out Diamond Prox. And we saw why Betsy liked the, the Ari pick into the Azir because he has three dashes. If one of them fails or gets used offensively, at least he can pivot around the wall and get out of there. Get out of that tower range quickly before taking too many tower shots. Well, a lot of votes in favor of Fnatic once more. Definitely the fan favorites for an extended period of time, 78%. But Fnatic only marginally ahead. 14 minutes in, they're a dragon down. One minute 30 before the next one spawns. And half. Yes, advantage top though, which is continuing to play into Huni's favor. Silence comes out into the rupture, and that's what so Cho'Gath wants to do. Rupture is easily dodged, but or flash. But if you can silence, then rupture ahead of your opponent. Either he'll get hit by the rupture or juke back into your jungler, following up. Rupture lands. Well, this time around it does. Silence lands. Silence come out as well. Rainover's looking for another knockup. Cover shot instantly flashing. First blood to Rainover, and that just looked really quite easy. And finally. Fnatic pieced together the puzzle, but Diamond Prox, he wants revenge on the bot lane. Reckless Flash is up though. Well, Yellow Star does not manage to get off the Black Shield. That's very, very late. Goes to Pepper, throws down the Unbreakable Will. He's in fact been exhausted, as has Reckless. Renova was trying to cut off Diamond, and Reckless gets the second kill of the game. Diamond made it out. And this way, Rek'Sai was banned so often in the European LCS because we just saw her get a kill on top lane, and immediately she was already part of that fight on the bot lane, combined with Huni's teleport. Fnatic moving their resources all over the map, but now crucial, teleport advantage on Kabashard yet again. And Gambit, they will need to answer. We'll see how they decide to do that. But again, small plays, small advantages, and small leads to Fnatic. Fandivin doesn't have level 11. He's going in for Betsy. Betsy gets knocked under the tower once more. It's the same combo. What a fantastic binding from Yellowstar. Read the play by Febiv and Fem said, hey, look at this. I'm going to go in, shuffle him back, prep your binding. This is Synergy. They've done this before. This is not the first time they've played these champions together. And now we see why Azir has been banned against Febiv in several events. Yellowstar might be finding himself between a fat man and an angry bull. Pulverized up, barreled back, and head butted for further distance. That's going to be a dead Yellowstar. Checking the wrong bush, I'm afraid. Face checking brushes is dangerous on Summoner's Rift. Good punish by Gambit there. They also took down a bottom tower. Forgiven has a 20 CS lead right now. Try for spike for Reckless though. I mean, have a pause. I'll see exactly what the problem is in a moment or two. But let's quickly summarize where we are in the game. Again, a thousand gold lead for Fnatic. Three kills to one. Dragons coming up very soon. But it's Huni that's got the earlier Rod of Ages and Kabashad going with the same item build that we saw yesterday. And yeah, now we went, going back to a champ select, we said there are two ways to try and shut down Arise. Either you go for the jungler top laner synergy combo, which we see in the combined knockups coming out of Rek'Sai and Cho'Gath, or your lane. So Fnatic opted for the normal lanes, took them a while to piece together that combo, but eventually they got it and Kabashad fell, but he did a good job dodging it, only down 30 CS. Um, I'm not sure it's enough. Seeing it's how well, powerful Rise is and seeing Huni came back for more. So Huni was down 0 2, starved in CS, and magically became this one man army later in the game, anyways. Well, I guess that, that's a very valid point. If there's anybody that's going to know how to play against the Rise, it's going to be Huni because Rise was down, and, or Huni was down yesterday. Uh, just quick update it is Gosu Pepper having a problem with his in game chat. So the guys are on the matter. Yeah, I've seen this uh, problem before. Back when we played against Gambit, whenever we got uh, onto a computer that they had used, 
a lot of the the Russian players uh, swap their minimap and chat location around, and then when you swap it back, you lose your chat box. And you generally don't notice when you're warming up, but then you get on stage and you you try to time something, and there's no chat. You panic. Where's my chat? <laughs> and then you ask the referee, and it's like, oh. How don't you know? You've done this before, and then they swap it up and they fix it for you. Well, Maybe that problem. There we go. We'll find out. We'll get that confirmed in a moment or two. I can see Ghost of Pepper connecting and reconnecting. But very even, very close, very tense. In a matchup that was top of the table, bottom of the table, what a difference Gambit can look like when they have a team composition that makes a whole lot more sense. Yeah, a lot of people would have written off Gambit based on the standings here. I've done it before, writing off Gambit when they're down and they're playing top team. And I've always been wrong. So from that moment onwards, never again. Ferocious Gambit coming out. Aggression, sometimes a little ill-advised, but I want to have them go too far forward and too far backward, if that makes any sense. It makes perfect sense. And we'll see if Gambit can use that too far forward mentality to help push Fnatic. Take a look at your items really quickly. Cabochard eats a Rupture and Feral Scream, and that's a lot of damage. But Hex Drinker for Rain over, as you mentioned, Trinity Force for Reckless versus the Eye Edge. So, I think there's a small item advantage if Fnatic can make use of it, and we'll see whether they do. Yeah, a bit of a spike uh, on the Triforce here, but Given does get his Avarice, IH, as you said. Bam Scepter too, because he can sustain. Now I'm trying to see, or trying to deduce why Huni would go for this Cho'Gath, and it looks like once this fight starts and Rice eats one crowd control effect, Huni will immediately flash, silence, feast, and that should be enough to either get the new Rise, who is very squishy, but does a lot of damage, down. And that's the way they want to do it. Trade offensive summers from Huni. Yes, he might die in the process, but if you can take out the Rise, then a big part of your problems are solved. And I'm really looking forward to these team fights. It's going to be very interesting to see how Fnatic plays them. Forward, backward, are you going to kite or just all in, take out the priority targets and try to survive afterwards? How is Gambit going to use their mobility? A lot of questions. We'll find out soon. We did see Fnatic trading or securing rather their first tower. They had lost their bottom lane tower. And it looks like Diamond is going to try sneak this dragon. They've got great vision in and around the river. He snuck over through the wall. It doesn't look like Fnatic are aware of this one. And have Betsy covering in the bottom lane as well. He's very quick at moving from bot to the dragon if something happens. Rain over though. Huh? He doesn't know, he doesn't know. He's just going for the gank on Betsy on the bow in and Dragon all right goes down. Everybody hears the dragon has been slain. But it cost him a tower. Fnatic take the middle turret as well as the top one. So now tower advantage and an even larger gold lead, 3,000 Krepo. Almost a, a swap scenario of Gambit against Elements where Gambits were the ones taking towers left, right and center, but giving up the neutral objectives and, and more so the kills. Betsy. I think he's in trouble, Crepo. I think so too. What CC can land? Soul Shackles comes out. I think he broke the tether though. Not gonna be enough. Yeah, Rain over with a beautiful flash knockup after the first Spirit Rush was used. Solidifying that kill. He knew if he waited any longer. Look at Betsy still has his flash, but that knockup came in the right time. Three people hitting him. Even if he flashes afterwards, some damage would hit him. And this is why Rain over is yeah, one of the best, if not the best jungler, just like Diamond Proc said in the feature. He has a lot of respect for Rainover, rightfully so. I think it's fair to say that there are very few junglers in Europe who have the same level of impact every game that Rainover does. I'm hard pressed. I'm hard pressed to think of a game where Rainover has not done similar things as Fnatic look to secure one more tower. Cheeky yellow star just on the outer edge of range. And picks up the goal though. Yellow Star is now 1,200 gold ahead of Gosu Pepper. Two additional towers, two additional assists. Nomad's Medallion. Nomad's as well. I'm going to take a look at the total gold earned. It's sitting around 700. Currently gold shared on Relic Shield, 230. A very big difference. Gosu not landing as many last hits as he would want to. However, he have, Yellow Star obviously invested more gold into upgrading that Nomad's Medallion, of course, as well. AD carries. Even though there's more global gold on the side of Fnatic, bang on even with a slight le edge even towards Forgiven. I'm not surprised. Always been very good at farming. But, as the Reckless said, too focused on lane. Not the game. And let's see if this translates. I think uh, Forgiven's going to get very close to getting that static shift, sitting at 900 at the moment. It's a couple hundred away, and then we'll see where they apply their pressure. 
Now a lot of players wonder why Static Shift, not Phantom Dancer, because it seems a lot more efficient, has better stats in the long term. However, you have to remember that Average Blade speeds up your third item. Yes, you get you get the extra gold, uh, you get the extra gold on Average Blade. Then you get Shift, which costs less overall as a Phantom Dancer and allows you to transition quicker into your third item, Lost Whisper or BT, whatever you prefer, and just get you that extra little spike earlier in the game. So we just hit Tower 20 minutes, down. Crepo. Betsy lands another great charm. He's going in on Reckless. Reckless manages to arcane shift, but needed to blow the heal. But Tower secured there in favor of Gambit. That's number two. The rest of Gambit were looking top, and you can see Cabo's got teleport as well. Yeah, Betsy playing forward. A lot of aggression, a lot of pressure. Yes, he's 0-2, but I feel it's okay. He traded those kills. In return, he put a lot of pressure on the map. He was mid, he was bot. He's drawing members from Fnatic away, giving breathing room. Four that rise to scale, four forgiven to farm up. Hit his item spikes. And eventually, Gambit will group, and then I want to see how they use on the hunt as a team. I'm not grouped for it yet. I'm 22 minutes in. I know we keep talking about the time, but this has really just been a very, very farm centric game. At least they're rotating. They're going for objectives, towers, dragons. By no means has been a boring game. I also want to highlight again, four sweepers, this time for Gambit. Only for Given not running a sweeper. We've got some upgraded trinkets on the side of Fnatic. So different approaches to your trinkets. And we'll see whether or not the Given and the rest of Gambit can deny the vision. Fnatic trying to hold on top. Yeah, Huni with the Morella Nomicom Sword Shoes. He's sitting on 40% of CDR as well. His spells will go down incredibly low cooldowns. One rupture can come out every five and a half seconds. We can now silence every eight seconds too. And all so the a lot wave of crowd control. Well. Yeah, waves only come every 30 seconds, so only spells will definitely be in time for those. Things going on on the bot lane. We're going to see some action. Reckless caught. Well, he does manage to flash away. Here comes Rain over. That's a flash forward from Cabo Shot. The knockup keeps Cabo Shot in place. A silence onto Diamond. They've traded one for one. But Huni needed his teleport for that, so advantage Gambit. Definitely advantage Gambit. Cabo Shard yet again with the teleport advantage. Will Gambit use it? Because this gives more breeding in the top lane. They were defending this tower, remember. Yes, he traded one kill for one kill. Flash was used on Reckless as well. Tower for Gambit. Teleport advantage for Gambit. Slowly evening out this game. Did not quite expect this level of strategic play from Gambit. And they made use of the TP advantage previously. They'll need to do the same because Cabo's down and they still got a deficit to claw back from. Yeah, we'll start going for the CDR boots, Talisman of uh, Talisman, rather, the new Shirelias from back in the day, and rather than the Righteous Glory, because Talisman allows you to move defensively, whereas Righteous Glory only gets used offensively. And we said this before the lineup for Fnatic wants to kite, and they might need that little extra nudge, that little extra speed boost. Because on the hunt on Gambit side obviously increases the movement speed of all the champions by quite a lot. Talisman of Ascension. Oh, <laughs> I wasn't going to call you out for that one, but I'm glad you looked it up. As we can see it on the pause screen. Tanky stats finally being picked up for Rainover. And this is just, it's, it feels like this is going to explode. We're as, building up the tension. As we've, we've got a lot of tension built up, a lot of items built up. You can see uh, Huni's rod is completely stacked, getting there for Cabo. And yeah, you know, CS advantage kills a global gold advantage, but there's the tanky stats that we touched on. Yeah, definitely. Uh, tanky stats picked off for Rainover. He went that warrior, as you said before. But notice that he had to, he needed some defense. Usually see an early random in his Omen, but what goes for the hybrid offense defense in the Hex Drinker. Picks up a Spectre Scowl, now a Giant's Belt, Ruby Crystal. He's sitting on a lot of gold. Just gonna take a look at my screen here and see just how far ahead of Diamond Proxy is. 800 gold in the lead. So there's a lead on the jungle that's marginal. Big lead on the support. 1,300 gold Yellow Star is now ahead. You know, something else we've also got to talk about, if we step back and we look at Fnatic as a team, uh, th their play style this game has drastically, drastically changed. Uh, you know, previously they've been very, very aggressive in your face, and now they're playing a very strategic tactical game. We'll expand on that idea in a second. I just want to call up a replay that we've got queued up of Febivin's Azir. And just how... Yeah, watch your, watch your minimap right now. Yellow starts coming in. See the soldiers? He knows that Febivin's going to go for this move. Black Shield goes out on Febivin as well. 
Good player as he is, he didn't even need it because he sidestepped the charm, but you see this is perfectly in sync. There's so many layers to this play to make it so awesome because that binding from Yellow Star was shot out before or while Febivan was making that move and it made it very hard for Betsy to predict and a beautiful combo. And I like things like this, you know, back in the season where uh, Nif landed that thresh hook on the kick uh, from Shook, you know, those little plays that are really, really, either people call them lucky, but let's just call them predicted and, you know, working together and it just shows a, a certain amount of synergy uh, within the teams. And I, I really like seeing that stuff. Definitely the case. So well played there by Fnatic. They have earned this 3,000 gold lead they've built up. But again, you know, to the play style, um, tempered aggression. Calculated. That's a better word for it because it, it's only been on that rise really where Reynov has focused his priority and used that void rush for when pressure is applied elsewhere. Yeah, and he kept Kabashard down. Yes, he only killed him once, but I mean, Huni hasn't died in this lane. And if we go back to all the rise games yeah. we've seen so far, usually around this... This level 9 spike that Stress pointed out at the Telestrator earlier, Rise now level 13. Usually, people start people start dying left, right, and center, and this Rise gets rolling, but Huni playing pretty well defensively overall. Oh, we'll have to see whether or not this Cho'Gath works out. It's, I think it's working a lot better than it's, it, it has in the past. When Febivan ran it, it did a lane swap, and it, it didn't really work out. And You know... Cho'Gath kind of appeared out of nowhere at the end of spring mm -hmm. and disappeared just as quickly. And this is the first time that we're seeing it here in summer. Yeah, Cho'Gath top lane has been played in the past. You do very high amounts of sustain. Yeah. And, and those little spikes he puts out on the minions that he can toggle, allowing for very easy push. And then his passive allowed it to regen a lot over time. That's why he was initially played. But now he's, he's more of an anti-mage. He's going to land the silence. You know, one of the few silences left in the game. And people forget that effect sometimes. Back in the day when you played against a lot of fiddlesticks, casting, yeah, you know, okay, silence, that's a mechanic. I know you, you barely get silence anymore. You're pressing all those buttons and you don't know what's going on. Why are my spells not working? Why is my screen gray all of a sudden? <laughs> Questions I ask myself every time. Still looking for those answers. Camera shot's gonna have to find an answer. He's got that Seraph's Embrace upgraded dragon. And Fox going in, Reckless hiding in plain sight, gets caught, double knock up. Forgiven with the dunk! One, two, three, Reckless is down. And now Gambit of Star Dragon. So let's talk about this play, right? The binding play with the Shurima Shuffle that I like, that was coordinated. Reckless was hiding on a ward. Diamond Prox says, okay guys, watch this. Body slam, explosive cat. Edwards reacts immediately with a knockup, and then Forgiven comes in and finishes him off without using Flash. That was beautiful. So excellently played by Gambit, and with their third consecutive Dragon in the game, it You're doubles spending. their numbers of dragons for the split. Bebevin's gonna try survive this one. He's gonna use the conquering shifting sands over the wall. Flash for flash. Black shield comes up, but it's not enough. Yellowstar has landed the binding and the soul shackles. He's gonna hold Betsy in place. We've seen the, the Nomad's medallion giving the movement speed from the talisman rather. And it's gonna be rain over the secure as the final hit. One for one. But Gambit with the ones initiating. Betsy with the aggression, the bravado for making that play, holding his spells until the right moment, forcing the flash, then chasing after. Let's see that again. Reckless going in body slam. Almost wears off. Nope. Cast comes in. Almost wears off. Flash from Ed Edward, or from Ghosty Pepper now. Really want to highlight just that little nudge. Oh, no. A little closer. But I want to highlight how solid that flash was. If he waited any longer to walk close and pulverize, Reckless could have potentially flashed out or dashed out at least, but Edward realizing that that was the case, goes for the Q flash pulverize all in and beautiful combination from Gambit. Into the waiting hands of Forgiven. Thank you. And that's what Back it started at all. Then Betsy with the follow-up. We saw the Ari into Azia and it worked for him this time. Gambit, the strongest performance they've had all summer. And then as I was mentioning, three dragons this game, they'd only secured three in their previous games. Getting closer to that ever-powerful Five Dragon buff. Diamond Prox gonna knock Yellow Star and Reckless apart. Yellow does have Flash available. Going in on Gosu, but no super engaged yet. There's Unbreakable Will. Engage or disengage. Yeah, very good game so far. Very enjoyable game to watch. Action here and there. Pushes here and there. Rotations. Okay, I guess Diamond Prox rather not hesitating on those explosive casts. When an opportunity's there, he throws it down. Definitely does. As I said before, I want to see him go too far forward and too far backward, and 
bouncing on a knife's edge. Yeah. Gambit still down. Goal, but refusing to give up. Never give up, never surrender. Used to be a motto of uh, Moscow 5 back in the day. From the previous split, their previous coach Leviathan taught them it's a process. They need to keep working through. Ghost Reaper's going to be a little careful. No unbreakable will, so Huni could have nommed him if any of those ruptures had connected. Cabo Shard. Archangel Staff finished, Well of Ages finished, working on those Mercury Threats to reduce that silence duration. He's knocking on the bottom tower. Huni doesn't quite want to TP out because he no TP doesn't have it yet. Is. Are we going to see a Panic Baron by Fnatic? No, panic or Strategic, that will be the question. TP is available. Is I'll tell you afterwards. Moving their way, but Cabochon hasn't left yet. He has Teleport. This is secured. This is secured to too late. Beast. Wow. Uh, I would call this a strategic Baron, Trevor. Cabochon still not teleporting. Fnatic now looking for the fight. Yellow Star, Soul Shackles on Diamond. And he body slams his way out. Forgiven's coming with on the hunt. I think that just wore off as Brain over now, forced to get back. Cabochon still trying to push that bottom turret. He's not going to be able to get it. And Fnatic with a flawless Baron secure. They definitely have the tools to finish this Baron. Remember, Huni's Feast deals more damage than Smite at this point in the game. They secured it beautifully together. Rain over Smite, it's up again. Cabochon didn't get enough. He's not that traditional top laner split pusher that can take down towers, take down champions, but Ryze still slow on these towers because he, his basic attacks don't scale up the ability power that you get. A lot of these uh, champions, when they're hitting inhibitors and the like, they get a partial component of their ability tower in their all attack damage against structures. You see, Ryze doesn't build that much AP. All resets on the buffs, but no real impact. And then we see those Merc Traits picked up for Rise as well as the Distortion Boots. So, TPs and Flashes are plenty. Make their way back in. And most importantly, a little speed boost as well, after using the Flash. If the Silver speed boost wasn't enough. If for some reason for Gim's not there, if he's, say, farming a bot lane, farming your jungle, something. You have your miniature oh, on the That's something we have to highlight. Forgiven at 29 minutes is 330 CS. He's about 2,000 gold, just under 2,000 gold ahead of Reckless. The farming machine can farm on Siva. And remember, first time this year on Siva. Both teams rotating a little bit. The Baron buff facilitates pushes as we've seen before. I think they'll take one tower. Can I take more? That's the question. 4 1 push, Crepo. Fnatic up top. They've got uh, uh, Huni down bottom. Flying threat from uh, Diamond Prox and Gosu Pepper, though. Don't want to come from the front. We've seen this before. If you all come from the same angle, Azir is going to say thank you very much and push you back. Tower's dropping. Black Shield's been used from Yellow Star. Tower's going down. Gambit unable to initiate. The Flash Pulverize comes down. They get Feverfin and Reckless. Reckless gets caught by the charm. He's taken out by Betsy. Here comes the teleport from Huni. He's thrown down the silence and Diamond is knocked up. Keep your eyes on Cabo Shot. He wants to clean up the fight. Reckless is down and Gambit are going to hold on to their base for now. Feverfin has also held on to Emperor's Divide. Not used it yet. Fnatic continuing to siege. Despite losing their AD carry, I take that back as they've backed away, secure the blue. And that was a fantastic engage by Gosu Pepper. I think we'll see it later, just exactly what he did, because I definitely want to highlight the, the brilliance of that play. And Gambit, they stopped Fnatic from taking the tower, from taking the inhibitor, with a bold move, a bold flank, and they read the situation perfectly, and they saw what they had to do. Empress Divide wasn't enough. Reckless got charmed in the wake of that pulverize as well. Diamond Prox. Looking for number four, his Dragon Dinner. There's no one here from Fnatic. Oh, I lied. They've caught Rain over. Well, he Jumped came in. The jungle flashes to the tunnel, so at least he's made it out alive. No smites. I think that dragon should be secured by the time we look at it. No, not been focused down by Gambit. But nobody from Fnatic challenging Crepo. See whether or not they continue this. You can see Huni was thinking about it, but too little and too late, and Fnatic lose their fourth dragon of the game. Yeah, that definitely gives uh, another window. I just want you to watch Ghost of Pepper here. He's going to go for the minion taxi into the Pulverized Flash, if I saw it right. I just want to see it again. 
He can't get to Feather in time. Ghost of the Minion, then double, fla double flash knockoff. And I can't stress this enough. That was a beautiful play by Ghost of Pepper. He realizes that he doesn't need to use the headbutt on his opponents if he can just get in range with it, gets the maximum value out of it, and then combo with his flash. He flash two targets. One flashes out defensively, the other eats a charm, and I would have loved to see him pick more of this Alistar, and this is why I love this champion. You can go in for these really, really solid plays, and then pop your breakable will become indestructible. Fantastic play by Ghost Pepper. Gambit now one dragon away from the buff that could help them win the game. Remember, there's still 6,000, 5,500 gold down. They've lost the Baron, but it's worn off for Fnatic. On the hunt gets popped. Given's looking for a target. We do see Ghost who goes all the way forward, but Black Shield this time prevents it. Yeah, slow combo from Ghost of Pepper there again. He wanted Yellow Star to Black Shield Ezreal Reckless, and then pulverize the ground after the Black Shield came down and get Yellow Star. Yellow Star, however, relied on Reckless saving his own hide and Black Shielding himself selfishly. More selfless supports could have died there, but a beautiful read by both supports. Little intricacies like that uh, often missed. And while that was going on, Fnatic got the bottom in a turret. Good thing you're watching that, Trevor. Hoonie. Sometimes I get a little Hoonie drifted away. Doesn't have teleport though, Kabashar does. So let's see how Gambit play the map now that the game has sort of reset. And it's all about these next moves, these next decisions from both teams. The number Six. 10 team in Europe is pushing Fnatic this hard. 600 ability power on Uni right now. Just gonna quickly check up how much damage that feast does by now. Um, around well, a thousand. Yeah, about a thousand and seventy. A thousand and seventy true damage, unblockable. <laughs> All right, Fnatic. That means only 1.6k damage more, and Rise will die. Kabashard's got 2,600 HP. Yep. Forgiven's got 1,700 HP. So yeah, Huni's Feast will uh, definitely have to keep an eye out for that. See the difference. Suffice it to say, one full combo from Huni will almost kill any target on Fnatic's side, bar rain over. The next question is, what do Gambit do, uh, what do Fnatic do when Gambit start the next Dragon? It's 40 seconds till Baron. Fight. They've not done it yet. They've not even looked to. They don't have vision there either. Gambit keeping up the pressure yet again. There's 6,000 gold down, but if you watch this game with the gold graph or the gold on the bottom of the, on top of the screen covered, you would not think this game is 6,000 in the lead for Fnatic. They're on the back foot right now. Betsy, offensive charms constantly, and a lot of them have connected this game. Definitely have. Reckless and Feb have been fallen prey to Betsy Zari. It hasn't been overwhelmingly game-changing, but it has certainly had an impact found key targets when it's needed to, and alleviated pressure for Gambit. Take a look at your items really quickly. Last Whisper, Bloodthirster. It's an aggressive build for Given, a defensive build from Reckless. Definitely seeing these tendencies, how these both team fights, both team compositions rather, what they want to do. Gambit wants to pop on the hunt and dive in, go aggressive. Fnatic, they want to survive, cleanse, QSS, and the likes. No cleanse, so they have to buy it themselves. Oh yeah, cleanse actually on for Given. I haven't seen him use it that much. Oh, has it? Knock up on Cabo Shard. Hooney's flashed forward. Charm. But he's alone. Eats a charm instantly. Rest of Fnatic most likely. Not going to get there in time. On the hunt comes out. Rainover gets rooted in place. Black Cabo Shard. Cabo Shard's found Yellowstar, but Reckless and Forgiven are alive. We do see Fevervin going back in with the Conquering Sands. Now Cabo Shard's knocked up. Hooney looking for a target to feast. Can he find Cabo Shot? He's decided to turn around, and I think he feasted Diamond down. We see Gosu Pepper going out as Forgiven follows suit. Cabo Shot forced to run as Feverven's Sand Soldiers are commanded to attack, and they take him down. Double kill, and Fnatic get a four for one fight. Fantastic fight by both these teams. Huni was running around trying to catch somebody, barely got in range, but the remaining Fnatic members did such a great job at kiting, dodging the damage. Staying alive in this fight, good Emperor's Divide to reset the fight. Reckless uses entire mana pool in that fight, and oom all together there, and somehow Fnatic survived. And we've seen the clash of styles here, diving in against Kite. Fnatic, they got the better of that one, but it was close. It was oh so close. What a important team fight for Fnatic. Here's the replay. Let's watch that little sore. Bait from Fnatic, Huni flashes over silence, barely misses. 
Watch the bottom side of the fight right now. Watch, see what Fnatic members do. Rainover gets snared, but he's the tankiest member. Flash still gets used defensive. Yellow star now tanking. That's a support. That's okay. Emperor's Divide stops the combo of Diamond Prox and Betsy. Betsy flashes out of out of the uh, Ezreal ultimate right here. Rainover goes in with a flash knockup. He's stalling for time. All Unbreakable Will is running out. And you see, they can't get past the Alistar, but eventually his ulti drops. Then Fevevin dashes in. Looking at Cabo Shard. He's got a lot of damage in return here. It's just not quite enough. And I want to say beautiful fight by both these teams. And that's the styles, isn't it? Gambit wants to run at you as five, and Fnatic's trying to peel and dance backwards. There they had enough time. Crepo, it is 10 seconds before Dragon is up. Baron buff is on Fnatic. And this Dragon is aspect levels for Gambit. Fnatic do not want to give it up. And a lot less flashes in this fight, so the kite composition has a bit of an edge. This Gambit has a lot harder time to close the gap, so they kind of want to flank. Nineprox giving up the dream of just going for the 50-50. Edward. Less than 50-50. Less than 50-50. If Hooney gets in range. Find out if it can work. Hooney does get knocked up here by Cabo Shard. Gambit seems to be peeling away. On the hunt was thrown down. They should be wearing off soon. Dragon still alive. It's busy chilling at the front of the pit. Has reset. Diamond eats a dark finding. And you can feel how important this objective is. The minimap is slowly pushing in favor of Fnatic towards Gambit's base. Oh, we see the teleport. Did he switch to home guards? No, it's not. Find out. Gambit are looking to engage. Rain over. They rain over. Rain over. flashed awake. Diamond Fox going to body slam back. Now Hooney looking for a rupture. Does not connect with anybody. Nor does the Feral scream. It looks like Fnatic have control of the Dragon Pit and they're going to secure their first dragon of the game. Yeah, Fnatic recognizing that you can punish Gambit if they get close to these choke points. We saw a triple soldier in that choke point, zoning rupture, zoning silence in that choke point. If Gambit stepped in for the dragon, they would have gotten roasted, AoE'd, and they have to they have to yield, give up this dragon. In six minutes, they have another shot at becoming the first team in Europe so far to pick up that fifth dragon. I don't think Fnatic's gonna but give them that game. chance. Fnatic well, last still has like Pepper going in. Black Shield is going to keep Reckless alive, and Gosu's in trouble. He sidesteps the True Shot Barrage, and skill shots go wide. Charm dodge, Dark Binding dodge. Gambit doing everything they can to survive here. Unbreakable is on cooldown. They've caught Rainover out, but he's happy to take shots because Fnatic have got the tower. Get this tower. First Dragon does a lot for Fnatic at this point as well, especially if you're running a full kite single position. On the hunt gets popped. Now remember, Betsy's not there. The explosive cask has been used, and that didn't do a lot. But props to Febovin. Empress Divide getting them out clean. Good black shield by Yellowstar as well. Sending his teammate right there. Inhibitor doesn't drop. Yet important. Gambit for the second time when they're close to losing in a tower slash inhibitor. They hang on. They survive. And Rise still has item slots. They get more scary and scary over time. But Just needs the resources to do so. Arise's item slots powerful enough to come back from a 10k gold deficit? Oh, after seeing yesterday, yes. Yes, <laughs> yes they are. <laughs> but Fnatic, they, they've obviously played a lot of Rise, and Huni, as Wayne over said in his interview, played his champion maybe 30 games in a row, according to him. So if there's any, any team or player that knows the weaknesses potentially of Rise, definitely be a Fnatic. And they seem to be playing around it so exceptionally well. They always say offense is the best defense. Given staying true to that mantra, picking up a recoil ball, uh, building his fifth offensive item. So 40 minutes has just ticked over, Crepo. Leaning towards one of the longest games here in summer. Fnatic still, again, you know, 10k gold lead. They've got the kill lead, the tower lead. They're behind in dragons. And that's the only metric. And the previous dragon, the fifth dragon that Gambit wanted belong to Fnatic, they... But they're slowing think. down. Look how Fnatic is not spreading out their members because they're respecting Gambit's group potential with On The Hunt. Woody gets snared, takes some damage. Black Shield is popped. Poking back and forth, we're waiting for that one bind to land. Diamond Prox to find an opening, and then everything gets explosive again. Righteous Glory is available for Gosu, as is Unbreakable Will and his Exhaust. Gosu's engages with those headbutts in the pole. Diamond rise. spotted on a flank, he's going in. Well, we do see the black shield. This time not gonna work. Yellow Star forced to go back, but Emperor's Divide says this lane is much thinner. 
Beast is used on Alistar. He's looking for the flank, doesn't find his target, and Rainover is now on the wrong side of the jungle. He's gonna tunnel away. That's a flash forward for Diamond Frogs. He really wants Rainover's hide. And if Bosu Pepper headbutts him to Ooh. another tunnel. Small mistake, but it's very impactful. Forgiven gets taken down as Rainover re-engages with the Void Rush. He gets a knockup onto Cabochon, and it's Reckless that gets a double kill. Fnatic with a three for zero. You have to watch your pacing in these fight. Gambits just go one step too far. We said earlier, we want to see them go too aggressive rather than too defensive, but Fnatic finally punish it. Fight again, so incredibly close. And with the death time as being 40 seconds, Fnatic have set their sights on the Nexus turrets. Looks like they can finally close this game out. Betsy, however, does land a charm. He's not done yet. It looks like he will be shortly, though. As he's gone in with the Sparrow Rush, the rest of Fnatic focus down the turrets. They're focusing down the Nexus. And in week two, 0 4 given. Gambit have lost all of their games, while Fnatic have won them all. But Gambit didn't play like a bottom tier team right here. They didn't play like a 10th place team in the LCS. They, play, they came to win. I like it. Just wasn't enough. Just that one extra step. But it was close. And Fnatic, <laughs> yet again, behind no, early, no, no. a little bit, or close. Struggling a tiny bit, but then somehow things are going right. Somehow, throw a snowballing and calculated, meticulous approach. And I take the victory. That's two days in a row that Fnatic have won the game, yet looked relieved almost in their celebration. Tell, says a lot about how they want to win their games, but also just the change in Gambit from yesterday to today. Such yeah. a marked improvement. Fnatic is looking forward as well. They finished first in the Spring Split. They did well at MSI, took some games of SKT. They want to go to Worlds and they want to perform there. And you, you don't perform at Worlds if you're happy uh, with just close wins. Right. You want to dominate the LCS. Gosu Pepper, of course, fantastic Alistair. Yeah. Really, really fantastic, Alistair. Engagers were brilliant and, and it really helped Gambit claw back in that mid game. Yeah, a couple niche little plays that I've, I really like when players don't just do the standard of the champion. Yes, we know the pulverized headbutt combo, but you can do more. Then we saw players use Q flash instead of flash Q. But then we see Ghost of Pepper tying it all together, the minion taxi going in, surprising his opponents. That's how you play Alistair often into Sivir matchup as well. You headbutt in and then you say, okay, am I going to pulverize? Maybe. You know, use your spell shield. We'll see. Same into Morgana matchups. Try the mind game. Worked sometimes. Didn't work other times. And Daylor, um, just listing all the mistakes. You did that wrong, you did that wrong, <laughs> did that wrong. But we won, so you get a victory dinner. Yeah, exactly. 4 and 0 oh for Fnatic. They are solidly at the top of the table. Origin have the opportunity to match that score later today. Gambit, on the other hand, 0-4. Like we said earlier, they went 0-5 in spring, bounced back to 7-0. They got their hands on Rise, and that's Rise's first defeat. And I believe Alistair's second or third defeat now in the summer split. Yeah, Huni stayed alive somehow. Didn't feed the Rise. Did what no other top laner was able to do before. Heat that Rise in check. Fnatic didn't play. They played around the Rise early game, trying to shut him down, but then later they just dodged him. They said, okay, that Rise, strong. Don't fight. Fight the other guys. Force him to come back. You let him split push. He doesn't take those towers on all too fast. He blows up the waves, but just structures don't fall that quickly. No, they definitely don't. There's the team composition, just to remind you. It was the Cho'Gath into Rise. We saw Rise cutting down multiple Maokais. And I want to give some props to Betsy's Ari. He actually dealt the most damage to champions in that game. Just shy of 29,000. Febivin's Azir, 26,000. Reckless, 26 as well. So, you know, despite it being a non... Uh, expected pick, he put the damage, he put the numbers down. And good draft by Gamma, definitely a vast improvement. And if anything, if they want to take anything away, it was the draft last. Yesterday it was atrocious. Today it was good. Solid draft, good teams on both sides, and Fnatic uh, took the win again, 4-0. Yeah. That they did. So congratulations to Fnatic. We're going to throw it over to the analyst desk to take